today on the Old Wolf Workshop. We cut tennis. We cut tennis. We cut tennis. Hello, I'm Derek Olson. Welcome to the Old Wolf Workshop. We're here for another installment in How Would I Do It Friday. Today we're going to be working on the tenons of the mortise and tenon joint. So, let's see how we do this. Old Wolf Workshop style. Now, typically when I cut my mortise and tenon joints, I cut them in uh, an unconventional order from the way most people do. Lots of people cut their mortises first. I happen to like cutting my tenons first most of the time. Um, so, usually at this point when I'm at with my tenons, now is when I start to make a design process that we did talk about a little bit when we talked on the mortise and tenon video. Um, you need, you basically you have three dis design choice decisions to make when it comes to mortise and tenon joints. You can make a blind mortise and tenon where you have it, the tenon and the mortise, and the mortise does not go through all the way. It's hidden completely from this side. So once they're placed together, it just looks like two pieces of wood joined together. It could almost be a butt joint, but there's more strength hidden inside. Then you can have, I've turned my saw bench upside down here, you can have a through mortise and tenon, which when I made the cross beam on my saw bench, I made my tenon all the way, my mortise is all the way through, passed my tenon through, and then pounded a wedge in here to help drive it apart, help add, give some added strength here. The other decision you have, I don't really have a great example of, is a, a tusked tenon. Or this would be where the tenon actually extends all the way through the mortise, and then you would have a wedge of some sort that you would drive through a second mortise inside the tenon that would help wedge that tight in place. That also leads to furniture that you can easily knock down because you could knock out that wedge, then disassemble the mortise and tenon joint and carry the various pieces off to wherever you're going. So what I have is I have some basic one by stock that I've milled up at two inches wide. One side is going to be my mortise and one side is going to be my tenon. Um, I'm not concerned for this demonstration purpose which how my face grains add up, how things like that look. What I am going to make sure I mark though is I'm going to mark both sides of my tenon as this is the side that I'm going to have match up eventually when they match up together. So I would do that if I were choosing my grain patterns. Then I'm also going to measure out and I'm going to mark up the actual cutouts for the tenon. I'm going to set my gauge here at about an inch and a half depth. Since they're two inch wide stock, that'll give me a good long tenon inside, but it'll also leave me a good amount of uh, a wiggle room on the far side, uh, on the deep side of the mortise, so that I won't have to worry about uh, blowing through on the other side. Then it's just a matter of quickly marking it up. Now I have my depth of my tenon marked out. Now I have to worry, and these are going to be my shoulder cuts. Now I have to worry about where I want to make my cheek cuts. Alright, so now there's just one more cut to define. When I'm making a mortise, especially in the, uh, or a tenon, pardon me, especially in what's going to be in the end of a joint, I want to make sure that I give that shoulder, that tenon some uh, haunches or some other sho extra shoulders that run down the side. So, once I have everything marked out, now it's time to start cutting that tenon. I make start with my cheek cuts running down along the front sides. What I've done to help get myself started is I've actually taken and making a little with a uh, chisel, make it, uh, made a little notch on the side to get myself started. That's called a second class saw cut from Robert Rearing's book, The Essential Woodworker. So once I have my, and this is how I like to do my setup, pardon me. I like to uh, clamp my piece in my work vise facing this way. I know you guys, if you saw my uh, How Would I Do It Friday half lap joint video, 
you saw me do this there too. Uh, I like to use a wood screw, uh, wood clamp, hold it down in place with a uh, hold fast, and this allows me to work into and with my bench rather than trying to work alongside of it. And you know, I guess maybe just for us uh, as big bodied boys, this doesn't always work as well for me as working like this does seems to be. So now it's just a matter of getting started, getting getting started sawing, getting started sawing. So now, because I'm only human, and because I rarely get my saw cuts perfectly perfect, I always take a little bit of a wide chisel, and I just clean up where I uh, miscut or where I was off by a little bit, uh, if I was. So now, these are very short, stubby little tenons. There's times, like... when I cut the mortise and tenons for this lid of my tool chest where the tenons were you know three inch long tenons two and a half inches wide bigger wider uh, beefier tenons and sometimes those, all those don't always pair clean with a even a wide one inch chisel uh, in a lot of those cases one of my favorite uh, tools to go to is called a slick. It's just, it looks like a big, beefy, heavy chisel, but really it is a very nice, very elegant chisel. You sharpen it just like you would a paring chisel, so a very low angle of sharpening. And this long handle on the end of it gives you a lot of great control when it comes to paring out that tenon and getting everything smooth and maybe slick, that might be where the word comes from, but getting everything smooth and even all the way across the tenon base. And it might even work a little bit better than a shoulder plane even does to do this kind of work. So, that's how I cut my tenons here in the old wolf workshop, typically speaking. If I have a whole nest of them to cut, I might go ahead and take them over to the bandsaw after I get them marked out and uh, make my cheek and my shoulder cuts on the bandsaw instead um, just to speed things up a little bit. Um, from here on out, I'll be able to take my tenons and I'll use my tenons to measure out how I cut my mortises. Um, and I don't worry when I make them, I don't worry about making my mortise and tenons joints fit absolutely pissed and tight, uh, because the majority of the time when I make them, I also uh, pin the joint together or draw bore the joint, and that helps add some extra strength uh, instead of just relying on a, a super, super tight fit uh, to that joint. Um, at any rate, I'd like to thank you for watching. Again, my name is Derek Olson. This is the Old Wolf Workshop, and this was How I Do It Friday, Tenons. The Morris and Tenon joint. Seasons and greetings from the Old Wolf Workshop. Today on the Old Wolf Workshop. And he cut tenons with a saw, 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 saw. Down, down, down.